Today we're going to talk about anxiety and we just had that item in the news about um, suddenly more people going to the COVID-19 testing centres because they're anxious after the reports of uh, those two people who were on the loose, I guess mm-hmm. is a dramatic way of putting it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and, we've, and, and people are well aware of, more kind of aware of the, uh, the issue of anxiety through the whole lockdown and everything like that. A lot of people became more anxious. We've talked about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Marie, uh, how do we want to start with this? Well, I just think that, you know, anxiety is a word, you know, a bit like depression. It gets, it gets out there and we, we um, kind of label ourselves with anxiety, but we don't understand, you know, what it is, um, how do we experience it in our, in our body, what's happening to us, what's our thinking like, you know, what is anxiety? It's a thing that's bad, we've got to get rid of it, Marie. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's kind of how it feels, right? For a lot of anxiety is, you know, there's 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 different platforms. I think to to anxiety, there's, you know, like I was saying to you off air, you know, there's anxiety that's wrapped around trauma. So that that's a different platform than the day to day anxieties that we may experience. Um, and it's kind of I want to look at the day to day anxiety that we experience because I think we try and uh, well we don't we don't know we're doing it but we bring those two together anxiety around trauma or just natural normal anxiety and we don't realise there's a difference there um, you know so we label something with anxiety you know I'm suffering from anxiety I've got high anxiety and. You know, in, in the world that we're living in and the stresses that are around us, it's no wonder, you know, we are having um, high levels of anxiety. Um, but it's noticing, well, what is that? And anxiety is actually our friend in many ways when I'm looking at it from this platform of just being purely anxious about something. Yep. Um, it is actually a warning sign. It's, our, it's, our, it's part of the brain that's in the amygdala. It sets off our fight, flight or freeze um, reactions. But it's also a warning um, signal for us to to take heed, to um, notice something, to to be cautious, and and in and in some ways, anxiety can motivate us to to do something that we um, that we we might feel that we're not able to do. So anxiety can actually be a motivator as well. So we look at it like our enemy, but but it's it's not our enemy. Um, if we know what anxiety means in our own life and how we can um, work with our anxiety or notice our anxiety and help ourselves support ourselves when we're having moments of anxiety. Um, so feeling anxious mm, about some things is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a normal. It, it's it's yeah. Um, so I've got this great book that's just come on, come on, come on. Um, I want to. I don't even know if I should say like the market. Is that how you say that? It's out. Yeah, it's new, newly. The new book's out. It's a new book. Yeah. <laughs> and it's called Your Anxiety Beast and You. And it's booked, uh, by Dr. Eric Goodman, um, which, you know, it's a compassionate guide to living in an increasingly anxious world. Um, and I'm really enjoying this book because it's a very practical book and it gives you. Um, Lots of, of of ways of working with your anxiety. It tells you what your anxiety is, where it's coming from, what part of, you know, what it's affecting in your body, and how to work with your anxiety. So it works with phobias, um, you know, spiders, flying heights, all those wonderful things that you know, people yeah, become yeah. Um, anxious about. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed um, working through this book. It, it's Nothing that I probably don't already know, but to me, what it's highlighted is that, which I actually really enjoy, is that anxiety is not our enemy when looked at the platform from pure anxiety and not uh, anxiety wrapped around trauma because that's that's a little bit different um, and we have to work through that. But if we can see anxiety is not our enemy, then we can see it as our warning sign um, that something is, is going on and being able to actually work through something rather than medi- medicate our way through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so now I'm going to leave it up to you because there's some, there's some things there that um, are written down that, that you could probably read out if you want. Well, should we That's, just give the yeah. list of symptoms? Yeah, Isn't yeah. That a good go place to go. So um, in case you don't know, mm. uh, here's the list. Agitation, uh, irritability, 
which is sometimes that's the first signal if we're particularly disconnected from ourselves mm. irritability can be the first sign it's like oh I'm irritable why am I irritable exactly um, muscle tension yeah that's a really like I might come back to that one yeah Keep going. S- sweating mm. shaking numbness mm. we get really serious here heart pounding or palpitations mm. chest pain mm. Uh, as opposed to actually stuff with the heart. Stomach discomfort, maybe to the point of vomiting. Mm. Uh, Going to the toilet a lot. You don't want me to say frequent <laughs> urinational bowel movements. I don't know why. <laughs> it sounds so, so clinical. <laughs> d- 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, pressure in your chest, mm. which mm. is different to chest pain. Isn't it interesting, eh, that in the amount of issues associated around the heart there? And, you, and you, I mean, you hear about people yeah. feeling they're going to they, they've had a heart attack, but actually they go into hospital and it's been an anxiety attack, yeah. uh, which is distressing in itself because it, they feel so similar. And you see the the one that advert on TV, you know, which person is having the heart attack here, <coughs> and the uh, it's quite interesting because it's the other two that are probably having the anxiety attack, yeah. but it feels similar. And and how do you know the difference? I mean, you don't. I mean, if you're gonna any kind of chest pain, you should always get it checked out. Never just assume that it's something. You know, always get it checked out. So a lot of these are um, we a lot of us have a lot like muscle tension. Mm. That's I don't think we know as adults in our culture what it's like to not have permanent muscle yeah, tension, I that's reckon. Why I just, uh, that's why I kind of one I wanted to come back to because, you know, um, working with anxiety is all about our breath and breathing because when we get anxious, we close off our breath. We do what we call shallow breathing and, and the muscles tense up um, and the body goes into high alert. So it's ready to do something, fight, flight or freeze, Either fight our way out, freeze and not get noticed, um, or 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 run, mm, run, <laughs> run really really quickly, <laughs> you know. Or um, you know, or these other these other ones, obviously, like agitation, where we just get annoyed with everyone around us, um, and it's more of a um, a responding like that irritability. But the muscle tension is, is so, um, I think, quite key. And our breathing and recognising where you are with your anxiety. Because if you can notice that your muscles are tense, then you are tuning into yourself, you know? Because often we're not, and we're not noticing what's happening. We're just anxious, we're just irritable, we've just got heart palp- palpitations, we've just got sweaty palms, whatever's going on. We don't, we don't go any further than that, you know? So checking in, like, you know, when you feel your heart racing or you feel... Um, agitated or you're feeling um, nervous about something that's that's about to happen you know just checking in with yourself like how tense is my body right now you know you start with your your toes and work up your legs and all the way through the body or just start in the hands or just start in the shoulders like where are your shoulders are they up around the ears yeah, when, when most of up, us always up <laughs> but we don't notice that. We but I can't, can't force it down. <laughs> you can. You can't well, force it. But as soon as you but forget, it's wonderful. It's like, I know, but it's a wonderful feeling to take a breath in through the nose and and real good deep breath into the into the stomach, and then out and then and then release the breath out through the mouth. And as you do, to drop your shoulders down, it is a really wonderful feeling because you suddenly realise just how tense you are. Something I find that <clears throat> is quite instantly relaxing for me is is um, loosening the jaw and around the mm. eyes, like relaxing around the jaw and the eyes. That's that's a really effective spot. So that, that's me, great. So you've tuned into where you hold your tension. Uh, a lot of people don't, you know. Um, and and for you, it's your jaw and, and around, you know, around your eyes. And so being able to to notice that about yourself is is fantastic. And then you can. Oh, I need to relax that part, you know, just breathe through it and just relax and be calm, you know, and even our language to ourselves, you know, just relax, be calm, I'm okay here, I'm, I'm safe, you know, rather than, you know, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, am I going to get the job, am I not going to get the job, do I look right, do I not look right, do I, you know, am I good enough, am I, you know, do I, you know, anxiety stops us from doing so many things when we allow it to take control and lead in our life but it, if we if we are able to 
um, befriend it <laughs> rather than resist well, it. Or recognise that, recognise it for what it is. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then we can work with it because anxiety, like I say, can also push us to do things like apply for a job that that we might be a little bit concerned. We, we won't get or we're not good enough to get to work with your anxiety and notice it and go and, and use it as a positive uh, motivator more than a negative one. So I want to talk about that motivational aspect of anxiety and, and I want to talk about it being misused because mm. I, I reckon like I have this habit now that when I'm doing some work, like I just I get more and more tense about it and focused on it focused and working tight tight working hard working mm, hard mm. and that's from pressure put on as I think as a, as a teenager doing school work and as a young guy working in various places where employers main motivation tactics seem to be to put you in a state of anxiety yep. that seemed to be the yeah, only very true. didn't really have um, and I'm sure a lot of people are familiar mm, with that mm. the, the, a lot of employers didn't seem to have any other method of, of motivating staff except to make them anxious yeah Key there, <coughs> so, so it's yeah, quite, it's it's been going on for a long time. It hasn't has, it? yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're familiar with it. <laughs> it has. If I, if I think right back, you know, we are uh, built, a, you know, anxiety. It's kind of a natural way that we are to cause anxiety to either make somebody do something or to shut somebody down. Well, I don't think we think that through. It's just a natural thing we seem to do cause anxiety yeah, of, which almost, is a horrible place to be really it's a bit of a reflex in our culture <clears throat> and i and i think um because it is in our culture and it is so deeply embedded in us um that's why we don't recognize it anymore it's like anything you know when you're driving to hamilton you've done it you know a hundred hundred times over and, and yeah. after a while you forget you're even you know you think oh i'm here already like it's just and second nature and anxiety is kind of second nature for us we haven't really um, acknowledged it uh, well, like we don't with a lot of our bodily functions how we how we function or how our body works we don't take notice of it um, so <clears throat> yes it can be a natural way of um, responding to life situations um, in high anxiety because it's a learned behaviour so it's another platform isn't it it's another level to this anxiety that we suffer from it's been there a long time, Aaron. Yeah, but, um, and, you're, and you're talking about, like, I'm. that's not a, especially traumatic, what I'm talking about myself, mm. but there are people who the anxiety comes from traumatic experiences in the yeah. past. Yeah, so the, yeah. The, so that's that's kind of a different, uh, I, I kind of see that as quite, quite a different platform to work from again with anxiety wrapped around trauma because that's where um, it's almost like a broken record. There's something... You know, a traumatic event has um, been processed not through the frontal cortex, which is our thinking brain, but gone straight to the amygdala. So it becomes um, an event that is almost like a scratch in a record. I remember <laughs> you talking about this in the past. So mm. you, you can't actually, you can't mentally recall it, but physically mm. your body recalls yeah. it. Yeah, so the body remembers everything. So it becomes um, a way of responding to situations in a, in a heartbeat. Like, so somebody maybe has been attacked, you know, in the dead of night um, suddenly and didn't see the attacker and, um, you know, that, that type of trauma does not get processed through the, the frontal cortex, which is our thinking brain, which is what, what is we're responding to all through the day and gets, you know, we, we yeah. process information and it just gets filed away. It's, um, but something like that's traumatic like that, that happens very suddenly um, the brain cannot process it, so it, so it goes into the amygdala. It becomes more of a a feeling that we get. And so this um, this might just kind of manifest as someone who startles <coughs> easily, for instance. Yeah, well, I mean, like a, going back to if you've been attacked, and and then I mean, and it's years late, years later. It could be ten, twenty years later, you know, and you're walking down the street, or you know, and you hear a, a car backfire, or or you hear somebody coming up behind you, and the noise is familiar. Yeah, you know yeah. the whole situation is familiar, and suddenly you you just you go into shock and you can't move. You're in that fight, flight, or freeze, or you want to get out of there, or you you turn around ready to kind of attack. Um, right, and it's, it happens in a moment, and and you're left stunned with the reaction that you have because you I mean there was no there was no um, actual real threat there, at, um, and so and then you're left kind of in, in shock and the whole body. Um, whole system's in high alert 
ready for something to happen. And so, it's more of a feeling that you yeah. get. Yeah. So how do you work with people to get them out of that situation, given that it's not really lodged in the rational part of the brain mm. and you can't just recall it and say mm. what happened? I always think it's good to have information about how our body works and keep it as simple as possible. Um, there's lots of tricky things out there that are going to lead you off, lead you off into all sorts of wonderful ex, um, ways of of understanding the very simple thing that that you have trauma, you know, um, and it's locked into a a feeling more than a a um, a thinking process. So, yeah, how would I work with that? First, I would probably talk a lot about um, how the brain works, where trauma sits. How our body is connected to that, um, to give information so that you're not left in the dark about what's actually happening. Yeah, why does this keep happening to me? Yeah, yeah. Like it, it it helps to to then you can as an individual start formulating a process for yourself on how you react to to this trauma that you've experienced, and then and then there is of course dealing with the trauma itself and the event. Um, and then processing that and working through that. So that, that's a whole lot of, um, you know, more in-depth counselling. But it can be done. You have, have success with this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I mean, I've worked with my own. I'm, I'm always my own best test case. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, um, and and I guess if people don't work through their trauma, then at least they come away informed about their trauma, and yeah. when and and we're not always ready to face the things that we are dealing with, um, and it can take layer upon layer of of um, experiences in life to get to the point where you go, actually, really, I want to I want to work through this now, and, and I'm ready, I'm strong enough to. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> your first point might be just getting information. And that might be enough, or it might be just recognizing that you've had trauma in your life, and maybe that's enough. Uh, or maybe you're ready to go in for the for the full deal and work through it, which is fantastic and wonderful. Do you get people who say, "Well, I haven't, I don't recall having any trauma"? <clears throat> yeah, I do, absolutely. Um, and then as we map back through time and life and experiences, you know, because people don't see tra- people see trauma. As having an accident, um, being attacked, like you know, a big event, yeah, big event. Yeah, but you know, grief and loss is a huge part of of um, unprocessed grief and loss, and can be very traumatic, um, un- unresolved issues. Um, yeah, trauma um, can come through, you know, um, emotional abuse in our in our younger years. That we don't recognise as emotional abuse, you know. We yeah. just that was the way I was brought up. It, you know, it's that kind of thing of keeping people on edge, so they yeah, and, do what and you living want in that bit. high cortisol level that I've talked about before, where we are always kind of needing to be on high alert, be very watchful. That is not our normal way of functioning. You know, we have that that response in us for a reason. It's to get us out of trouble. Um, and it's an, an amazing um, response that we have that we're created with and, and is primal for us. It's our primal brain, you know, fight, flight or freeze. Yep. Um, I think we've got a story in here you're going to read out. Yeah, well, actually, I always wanted to we're read that, but lead. Well, I might, we yeah, might we'll have, a little, we have a little break. Sounds good. But we, what we're going to tell you about is a story of someone who actually, like the physical part of their brain where... The um, amygdala. The amygdala, where all this happens, um, was damaged. Yes. And, and what they were like. It's actually quite fascinating. So hang around. We'll have the ads. We'll be back in a sec. On the air, on the web, 24-7, raglanradio.com. Hey, you got the morning show with Aaron and uh, Marie's still in the studio. Welcome back, Marie. Thank you. And uh, we're talking about, we're, we're from the book, uh, Your Anxiety Beast and You, A Compassionate Guide to Living in an Increasingly Anxious World by Dr. Eric Goodman. A story about... A woman um, who, in, in the words of the book, whose anxiety beast died and left her to fend for herself, mm-hmm. SM, as she's called for the protection of her privacy, is known as the woman with no fear. Now, she had a normal early childhood, emotionally speaking, and uh, she was able to recall feeling terrified when menaced by a large dog or when her older brother would hide and then jump out at her and scare her. Then due to a rare genetic disorder known as Urbach-Wether disease, 
Mm, well done. Never heard. Well, how do we know I said that yeah, right? That's we why really I want you to read it. I, I think that was ger- <laughs> possibly German. Uh, yes. her, her amygdala was severely damaged. Uh, her anxious beast died. I guess anxious beast is what the book, yeah, that's, mm, uh, that's, that's the, the phrase anxiety. they used. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, leaving her defenseless. As a result, she lost the ability to become frightened or th- of things out in the world. Uh, brain researchers took a lot of interest in the case for obvious reasons. And uh, they tried to scare her to see what would happen. They took her to a terrifying haunted house. And rather than screaming when confronted by zombies jumping out of her, out of her, she was happily amused and went up to them and struck up a friendly conversation, <laughs> even reportedly frightening one of the actors in costume. Uh, the researchers also noted that she was eager to pick up various venomous animals and at times had to be held back for her own safety. Uh, she had a poor sense of interpersonal space and would feel comfortable talking to people right in their face. She also eagerly approached unsavoury characters late at night and had knives and a gun held to her. Most of us would have had an anxiety beast howling at us when faced with a gun or knife, but not SM. She was undeterred and put herself in the same dangerous, dangerous situations over and over again. Mm. So mm. Mm. anxiety really is your friend, <laughs> as we can see from it's that. A good, it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> but the thing I'm wondering is, like, surely I would have thought maybe you could rationalise a little bit and say, well, okay, I'd... I'd dodgy looking character down a dark alley I shouldn't go and talk to them but <laughs> it's not happening no that's how important our amygdala is that's how important our, our primal part of us is that fight flight or freeze you know it's there for a purpose without it we would be exactly like that we would be we would have no fear we would have no concern. We would see a cliff and we'd just walk off it. There'd be no concern about the height of it and that, that we could we could fall to our death and, and um, or anything like that. We'd just be... In fact, that would be... <laughs> uh, possibly adults might not do that, but babies and small children would. Well, without it, um, because they I don't think we'd get to adult. <laughs> we just wouldn't survive Yeah, yeah, no life it. experience. Yeah. We, we need this part of, our, of us to, to be able to sense danger to be able to negotiate our way through difficult situations and to motivate us into doing things. It was interesting um, that she even lost her sense of interpersonal space and we get right yeah. up on people's faces. Yes. Un- interesting, eh? Yeah. So just no sense there of, of, of anything, and that's exactly it, the sense the sense of something to be able to sense something was and I guess, gone and we do feel like if someone gets up close to us too close to us we do feel a bit of anxiety of course we do there's I, a, that personal you and know, we, all, we say it personal space personal space yeah, yeah. And, we all, and we all know people. <laughs> we've all had experiences with people who seem to have a smaller personal space than ourselves yeah. and I, I remember what once I was at this I think it was when I was a student I was videoing this conference and I, there was a lunch break and I watched these two guys continually move they were talking to each other moving around the room constantly <laughs> because one wanted to stand closer mm. than the other was comfortable with it and they were constantly it was really funny they were constantly on the move yeah and we do it even so, probably unconsciously we will do that we will step back yeah, well, and they were some having people a, will step in too they were having yeah. a, a fairly serious <clears throat> intense com- a technical conversation so yeah. they probably weren't quite aware of what was going on yeah so there's, there's all these uh, amazing ways that, that we function and amazing ways that our body signals things to us but we're, we're not really in tune with it. We're, we've been so focused on our environment and outside influences that this whole idea of how we actually function is, is kind of foreign to us. I would love um, to see us become far more aware about how we work and, and, and not overcomplicate it. Keep it simple because it's, it's a system that um, once you know it, you know it. I mean, except for the brain, I must admit, because the brain is always developing and we don't even use all of our brain. Um, you know, the capacity there is huge. Um, wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, it's a bit like outer space. It's the un- uncharted territory that we haven't <laughs> untapped, actually... Untapped yeah, potential. Yeah, un- untapped potential that we, we don't know a lot about yet. Wouldn't it be exciting to um, develop that more? Um, yeah. So... A lot of like we read out the symptoms before of anxiety, and I think a lot of people sometimes walk around quite unaware of them. Mm. Um, what to do? What to do? So, well, first is to be aware of them. So, unless you allow yourself to be aware of them, you're probably not going to be aware of them. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. We only know what we do know. So, first off, you've got to inform yourself. Okay, what is anxiety? Um, how does how does my body? 
how do I react to anxiety? Because it's different for everyone. So, so say you've got someone <coughs> who right now thinks that they're not feeling any symptoms of anxiety. Mm. Can you talk them through checking to see if that's actually the case or not? Can you like yeah, do that so, live on the air? Well, well, just I mean, anxiety is triggered. So um, unless you're sitting in a high state of anxiety all the time, which you'd probably be a, be a very unwell person. Um, so how do you notice it? Uh, sweaty palms. Um, heart racing, um, feeling nauseated, um, wanting to avoid and withdraw from from situations. So maybe um, somebody's a friend's called you up, asked you out. Um, you know, you're all wanting to go all at the beginning, and then and then the time comes around, you start to feel anxiety, like, oh, I don't know if I've got the right clothes, or do I look good enough, or, you know, I don't know if I can be go if I really want to go out amongst all these people, and so then you withdraw and you go, oh no, I'm just going to stay home and watch a movie, yeah, <laughs> you know, and so and so and then and then your anxiety levels drop, so you feel like you feel good. You know, but actually, what you've done, you've, you've, um, and then anxiety picks up later on when you go, oh man, I probably missed out on meeting somebody. You know, I could have met the the person of my dreams if I'd gone out last yeah, night, or, yeah. or did I? What did I miss? You know, and then you start to feel anxious about it again. Um, it's a nasty little cycle. So um, noticing, in and then it's about how you respond to anxiety. Do you shut down? Do you withdraw? Is there sweaty palms, heart racing? You know, feeling sick. Um, can we can we notice tension in our body too? And the, and the tension. That seems to be course. the one that, like so for me, that the, I hold, but I'm not completely mm, unaware of. Yeah, but you are aware of it because you mentioned it. So I mean, you're telling yourself you're not aware of it, but you are aware of it. It's only when I I get a prompt to think yeah. about it, though. So what's the prompt during this discussion? Well, this discussion's a prompt, obviously. <laughs> there you we go. can't spend all your time in, in this same discussion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, I don't know. But, it's, yeah, yeah I, but you do notice it because because before we even spoke about it, you said to me, you know, I notice it in my jaw and my eyes, and so you have noticed it, and there is something. So it's about mapping it's, that back. It has, it has to be for developing a, a new habit of, there we che- go. of checking in. Absolutely. Where, whereas, in a perfect world, I would. I sh- should I not immediately notice that I'm holding tension in no, my body? No, in a perfect world, well, we don't like, have. Like a, a, but yeah. I'm just trying to get like to the mm. to the mechanics behind it. Like if I was normally perfectly calm, yeah, then I would notice that I suddenly my jaw would got tense. So find a society where there's nice peace, calm, and things are pretty much keep on, kept on a nice even level, and you then you would be able to study them and go, well, they would notice when they couple, feel anxiety. There's still a couple of tribes left in the <laughs> yes, Amazon I was somewhere say that. if, if there you want to go and find them. Absolutely. Yeah. Not many and and left, so yeah. if you Not put them left. under stress, they would, they would notice anxiety. They would notice it. More than we notice it because we are living in it all the time. So what yeah, we've so got. Actually, to... I have read a book about that, mm. and um, and they they notice stresses that that we're not even that we, <laughs> we'd think nothing of. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. on the other hand, they are a lot happier. Exactly. Than we are, and are able and lot, to, uh, very to process, kind, very kind yep. communities. Yeah, process and work through things and negotiate and have conversations without feeling that all the anxiety rising when somebody doesn't agree with us you know because to us that that brings a whole lot of signals about how we're not good enough or you know um, that person doesn't know more than I do you know you is, can't is there what happens that when way. someone has a different point of view or even help mm. us a different political position than absolutely us? absolutely it's, and it's it bar- shouldn't matter it actually shouldn't matter. It shouldn't shut us down. It should open up communication. It should inform us, and we should be able to work. Well, it's helpful for us. The I shoulds, but it's helpful for us to 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 open ourselves up to hear different um, opinions and conversations, and be able to formulate new new processes and ways of thinking through that. That's how we advance ourselves. Uh, otherwise, we just shut ourselves down. And I mean, we we see that with the Black Lives Matter f- slogan at the mm, moment, mm. where there's there's a real issue going on, but a lot of the time it's descended into people shouting their own slogans. At, exactly. e- at each other, yeah. which and is then, yeah, pointless, which, pointless and frustrating. Yeah. But every, but everyone's all wound, everyone's wound up. They are they 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 are very wound up. Um, but to the it, point they, where someone in England hired a plane hmm. with a sign behind it that said "White Lives Matter Burnley" and hmm. flew it over a football game. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, like that's hmm. that's 
This is, yeah, it's, mm. it's got a little, it's <laughs> I don't got a even little know bit, how to reply I know, to it's that. Got a, it's got a little bit out of hand at this point. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it, it, just, it just takes away from the issue, and that is, you know, life matters. All our lives matter. Every life matters on this, on this beautiful planet that we live on. Um, and until we get our heads around that, you know, we're always going to be fighting each other, and I don't know, there, are, there is no perfect answer here. Um, you know, we, I could come we... up with a perfect answer, but that's through my faith, Aaron. So, <laughs> well, this, this is such this is such an issue that, call, uh, that causes so much tension at the moment. We should probably steer away from it and just say, how can we get ourselves to be someone? Can we practice on a smaller issue mm. of um, not letting it become? Mm. If someone has a different political position than us, it's it's not yeah. something that's a personal effect on us. How do we well, get to the, how do we get well, to I that? Think the key is what you just said. It's a personal issue, and until we're ready to take responsibility for ourselves and stop making other people be responsible for us, um, then you know we. I is mean, that our, like saying, our learning. So, our, so is that like saying that person's got a diff, different political point of view to me, and it's making me feel bad, and it's their, yeah, and so it's it's their, their fault. fault. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. so you're the bad person in this in this story. Whereas actually they're not; um, they're expressing, you know, their, what they want to express, and, and it's how we respond to that. Um, if I think of of some beautiful uh, political leaders like Nelson Mandela, who came across much opposition, um, and but he was able to articulate himself through that because he was living in huge. Um, um, areas of high anxiety, and that was coming from other people. He had to learn himself how to hold himself in that, and how to be true to who he was. And he was actually yeah. comfortable with that. And so, when you find a place of peace in you, then you aren't coming from a place of um, it's fight, flight, or freeze. It's pretty challenging. It is to achieve challenging. What he achieved. But but is it really? Because you know, to know ourselves isn't that what we is the most healthiest thing we can do in life is to know, you know, how does this body that I'm I'm in work for me? How does this? How do I? And how do I work with the system? That, that I've been given. Um, and so if you're noticing anxiety, you know, anxiety is all about breath and breathing, you know, and the tension in our body and noticing, noticing what's happening, noticing those things and self-talk, you know, to be kind and gentle to ourselves. So when we're running ourselves down because we are our worst critic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, is to notice that and go, hey, hang on a minute. Yeah, no, 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 I don't, you know, that's actually not the truth. Or, you know, I'm doing really, I'm doing my best in this situation. You know, I just need to take a step back from and, and look at this a different way. You know, not allow thoughts to dominate us and, and produce in us a, a response in the body that is all about anxiety and feeling afraid or fearful. Um, so, you know, checking in with that, you know, this takes time. It takes time to do this, checking in with your self-talk, checking in with what's happening in your body. You know, is, is my heart racing? You know, am I very tense right now? So, okay, just shift around, you know, shift and, you know, take a step or, or move your body and, and be present in it and take a good deep breath in through the nose and I mean deep, and then out. And it's really hard to do it when you haven't done it. Um, you'll find your breathing will be quite shallow and, sh- and short. And then, and then to release that uh, breath through the mouth and drop your shoulders down. And just do five good deep breaths, um, and then see how you feel. How does my how do my how am I feeling right now? You know, do I, am I feeling better? Oh, that that feels a bit better. You know, and so checking in with your thinking. What am I saying to myself right now? Oh, I'm terrified about going out, you know. Okay, well, that's all right. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be nervous, you know. Um, and then just keep working with how you are in that situation. And, I mean, I could go on forever around that. <laughs> I feel like I've, we've slipped into a counselling <coughs> counseling session. session. Right? But, I, but, yeah. but I, get the, I get the feeling like this is it's literally what you do in some sessions. Where Absolutely. Where you talk someone down from a, from a stressful yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah, and even our language, you know, are we up here somewhere, you know, in our, in our, how we're, you know, in our vocals, are we kind of like, whoa, you know, yeah. just drop it right down. You know, be calm, be gentle, be kind to self. Yeah, yeah. Drop your voice down. Everything, everything is an indicator of how the body is responding. So if suddenly you're shouting, then your whole body is involved in that as well. 
um, you know, it's not just a voice on its own. It will carry with it anxiety and levels mm. of stress. Um, hmm. And so some of the stuff I've talked about is how as when we're young, um, we learn to, or anxiety maybe triggering anxiety in us as a way of motivating us as, as young adults or, or, or kids. Hmm. Um, and so we're building that habit. Um, how do we, how can we, what's another way of raising our kids to, or how can we, incorporate this into the way we raise our kids that I think um, like I said I don't think anxiety is our enemy uh, we're, we're hearing too much about it as though it is our enemy you have high anxiety which you probably do um, we live in a very anxious world which we do um, but that but without some more informed information around that all we are getting is a fear factor um, associated with anxiety um, anxiety is also a so motivator. So then we, we become anxious about being anxious. Yeah, totally. Right. Um, so anxiety becomes our enemy. So if I feel anxious, there must be something wrong with me. No, there isn't something wrong with you <laughs> at all. <laughs> anxiety is quite a natural and normal state it's, of being. It, it's when it it's when it becomes front and centre of your life that it becomes a problem. So first, know what anxiety is. Anxiety can be a great motivator. It can be your friend. Anxiety is the red flag in your life to let you know that something is perhaps not what it seems to be. You know, so being in tune with that rather than seeing it as your enemy and trying to avoid it at all costs, which you can't do in this world that we live in. Um, Because like I say, we live in very stressful times, you know, huge anxiety levels out there, all associated with what's happening in our environment. And and, and then we've got the, the news media bringing it to you as well. Oh, we've got it from all I, angles. I heard this great description of the, of the news media uh, from someone once. They said, they said, do you know that there's people out there who go around gathering all the worst possible information and they bring it to you? <laughs> and then they tell you that you're ignorant and ill-informed if you don't know about it. <laughs> and, then, and then inform you how, like, how unwell you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and, they they, and then they'll bring you an that. article about how stressed you are from reading your own news, <laughs> and, and what stress and what the stress hormones will do to your body as it breaks down. I mean, yeah, it's all it's all a nasty little cycle, but hey, you can um, you can empower yourself, and I like that word to empower yourself with information about you, not about everyone else, just about you. Be informed yeah. about you. Um, let let everyone else deal with themselves. You just deal with you. That's a good place to start. Check in with your own thinking. Check in with your own breathing. Check in with your own tension in your body, and and start to read some books. Get some material. Yeah, if it's so not, this book. It's, yeah, it's a great book. It is a really good book. So I, we're talking I, about yeah. it. If you just tuned in, we're talking to Marie, who's a local <clears> counselor <throat> therapist, and we've got a book here in front of us: Your Anxiety Beast and You, hmm. by Dr. Eric Goodman, and. Um, and it's an easy to read book with pictures and even little exercises to mm, go through. Mm, mm, I don't great. want to say pictures. It's not like wall to wall text, anyway, is what I'm saying. So it's kind of digestible parts to yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah, cute, cute little guys in there. Anxiety beasts are great fun to look at. <laughs> and we do need to not be too serious about I mean, like I yeah, say, there are yeah. different platforms around anxiety. And if anxiety is attached to trauma, traumatic events, that's a different platform. But if, we, if anxiety is, 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 is a natural feeling for us to to we need to see it as as not our enemy and, and these pictures that I'm looking at of how they've drawn the anxiety beast you so know they're, it, they're light-hearted yeah you're light-hearted. Um, and we need to be a bit more light-hearted towards this so that we aren't consumed by it fearful of it and um, not understanding of, of how anxiety can actually work for us